Hey everybody, do you wanna be happier? Do you wanna to learn to be happy in the now when life's not perfect? Are you waiting for something to happen in your life that when it does, you're gonna give yourself the permission to be happy? Cause that's never gonna happen. Sorry to pop that bubble of yours today, but I have learned over the years, taking care of a spouse that was terminal with bone cancer, being a widow, being a single mom, remarrying, getting a divorce, being a single mom again. I have learned the hard knock way of how to be happy when life is highly imperfect. And I am excited today to share with you three things that have really helped me learn how to be happy, even when life is hard. Because guess what? Newsflash. Life is never going to be easy. And if it is easy for you right now, just wait because your time's are coming. And I've learned you've got to be happy in the now. So number one is look around. It's not what you look at, it's what you see. And I love that quote by Henry David Thoreau because it's so true. Are you going to look at the crazy relationship you have with your kids and your messy house and your yard that doesn't look as good as the neighbors? Or are you going to look at a roof over your head? your sweet babies that are breathing, and the food that's in your pantry. It's all about what you see. And when you plant those seeds of gratitude, guess what's going to spring up? Happiness. When you're grateful, you're gonna be happy. So number one, look out and see. Look out and plant those good seeds. And every day if you wake up and you water those good seeds with good thoughts of, you know what? My life is good right now. It's not perfect. It's not perfect. If you're waiting for something to make it perfect for you to be happy, it's not going to happen. For me, before cancer came around, it was a garage. And we lived in a condo in the, in, and I had to park underground. I had to go up three flights of stairs with groceries and a new baby. Moms, you're feeling me right now, right? I mean, we could do this with uh, two gallons of milk, 10 bags of groceries, and a baby carrier. I hated it. I, my life would be better if I had a garage. I would have been happier. I could be happy when I had a garage. For me, that was this trivial little thing in my life that would earn me happiness. And guess what? I got a garage, we moved. And it was like, hallelujah, Jesus, I'm pulling my garage, get in and take my groceries. It was good for like a month. And then I was like, hmm, I need something else to make me happy. I need this and I need that. And I would always put off my happiness on a condition of something. You know, you could be happy and laugh, but to be really happy in life, I need to get to this station in my career. I need to get to this toy that we want, this car that we want. And once we get there, then we're gonna be happy. That doesn't happen, it's not true. And when cancer came around and rocks your world and turns everything upside down, that stuff doesn't matter. What really matters in life is who we're with and how healthy we are and what we have is not things. It's people, connections, relationships. And when you're grateful for those amazing things, when you realize those are the things, those are the garages in life, is who you can call and who you can FaceTime and those connections and those relationships. That's what matters. Because if tomorrow, if it was gone, you'd miss it. Yeah, you might miss your garage, but you're gonna miss the people in your car more than your garage. And I've lived that and I know that. And if you're grateful for what you have, that makes everything better. It does. Clint with the toothpaste would make me crazy. <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and once his cancer came around and then when we knew that it was terminal, I loved that toothpaste tube. I loved it. And it made me happy instead of making me crazy. So it's all about, like Henry David Thoreau says, it's not what you look at, 
It's what you see. And when you see the good in your life, because it is full, it is so chuck full of goodness. And if you choose to look at that, you're gonna be happy. So number one, look around, look out, look at it, view what you have, because it's amazing. Guarantee there's someone out there that's wishing they had what you have. Number two, look up. If you have a hope and a faith and a belief that someone's got you, even though it's hard, that's what's helped pull me through and help me be happy in the ugly. One of my very favorite scriptures is in Psalms 146, 5. And it says, happy is he whose hope is in the Lord. And I love that because if you're giving it up to God and saying, I'm trying my best, I'm doing the best I can, that gives me so much solace and comfort and peace that I, it gives me that right to be happy. It helps me to take that breath and go, I got this because God's got it and he's got me. In Joshua chapter one, verse nine, it says, have not I commanded thee to be strong and of good courage? Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed for the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. Look up, he's there. He's there with you. He's there for you. Is your heart broken? Are you devastated? Is your bank account not in a pleasing direction? Is your family relationships a mess? Do you feel like you're a mess? I have checked all those boxes, and some of those are checked right now. But that doesn't matter. That doesn't define my happiness. Because when I look up and I know that God wants me to be happy. He wants me to have comfort and peace. And when I'm doing what I can do, he's going to make up the rest. Believe that God can help you and then act as if you believe it. And lastly, number three, look in. Believe in yourself. I love to remind myself I've made it through 100% of my bad days. And in that, it gives me like, mm, I got this. I can do this. No matter what hard comes my way, I can do it. I know it because I've gone through hard, bad times. Have you, is this kind of a first hard, bad time you've gone through? Then think of a mentor. Think of an example in your life. Somebody that's gone through something really hard and put your focus there and know that you can triumph just like them. And when, and then when you do that, you'll be able to look back and go, Mm, I did that hard thing. So now, when another hard thing comes, instead of relying on your mentor or an example, you can rely on yourself. And I look in the mirror, and my life's highly imperfect, but I believe in myself because of what I've been through. And I know that God believes in me. And knowing that makes my life so full of happiness and joy that I can accomplish great things because I know I've done hard things. I've done impossible things. And when you know you can get through, that's where the magic happens. That's where you can make your not ideal life still be full of happiness, still be full of joy. Sometimes our trials in life aren't for us. I've learned that. Sometimes we go through hard because little eyes are watching or neighbors are watching or family is watching and they're wanting to see how are they gonna get through this one and then they use that in their life especially us moms we have little people around us every day and they're watching us <sighs> kind of a scary thought sometimes they're watching what we do they're watching what we say they're wanting to be like us we're their mentors and we need to give them the good fuel, that we can be happy if life's not perfect. In Alma chapter 17, verse 11, it says, Be patient in long suffering and afflictions, that ye may show forth good examples unto them in me. And I will make an instrument of thee in my hands unto the salvation of many souls. I was reading that the other day, and it was like a light bulb. Like, oh, hmm. so sometimes our trials aren't for us. They're for other people watching us. 
And how are we going to handle that? And having gone through a public cancer diagnosis and a death, I have witnessed that our example, especially Clint's example of how to have faith and how to love your life despite its many imperfections has helped. The ripple effect I know has helped so many people because of his example. My nine-year-old Wyatt came up to me the other day and said, with this big smile on his face, I'm brave, I'm blessed, and I can do anything. And I just looked at him and I'm just like, proud mom moment. Like, that is right, buddy. You have got it. What if we all did that? What if we looked in the mirror every day and said, I'm brave, I'm blessed, and I can do anything. Because that's the truth. If we look out, if we look up, and we look in, and we believe in ourselves, we can accomplish so many things with happiness. So what are you waiting for? You can be happy now. And no matter what, don't forget to put on your big girl pants.